Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be playing Taverns of Tiefenthal, which is kind of a deck building game, a bit of a different one, all about running a tavern. We're going to have customers coming in, taking up tables, we're going to be upgrading our very modular jigsaw PC tavern and trying to get better and better customers, nobles that will give us points, all sorts of extra things. I have got a handheld and an overhead camera. You can switch between those in the description. I recommend you turn on the Klingon subtitles because if I've made any mistakes, they will be corrected there. And if you would like to help me keep making playthroughs, it's patreon.com forward slash slicker drips. Links in the description. Thank you so much to everyone who supports me on there. You literally make this happen. This is how I am able to be here filming these things. And hey, it's nearly the fifth anniversary. Well, actually, it may have already been the fifth anniversary by the time you see this. Chip in. So, in this game, we each have the same tavern to start with, but we have these three start cards here, and we each have to pick one. We can pick the same one if we want, and it's going to adjust our starting situation a little bit. It might give us some actual upgrades in our bars, it might just give us some cards, it'll give us some combination of both if we pick these. So we have to go through and pick what we want. So, over, I won't go into all of the rules up front I'll explain as I go along uh, but one thing to mention actually before I get started is that this game can be played in a much more basic fashion and there are modules that you can add in bit by bit to make the game a little bit more complex I'm playing with everything turned on right now uh, so I think that does I was recommended playing like this and I do feel like it uh, is at its best with all of this stuff on but yeah, you can play it in a more simple fashion as well by stripping those out and just playing the basic game. So, I could upgrade my dog over here. I could basically get a server. Uh, you don't get the points. Usually when you upgrade things, you get a noble card, which is points. And I would also get myself a server card, which is a way to get extra dice. I could get an extra table, more space for people to be in my bar. I could get a bard which uh, keeps people entertained, moves this cube around this track, gets your points. And uh, I would also be able to upgrade my barrel storage, be able to keep more beer between rounds. You can only keep two at the start of the game. You can upgrade it, you can keep a lot more. Or no upgrades, and you just start with a server, a table, and a brewer. The brewers just give you an extra beer when they're drawn. I think... I would really like a server. I would really like some extra money to start the game with. And you're only getting one extra card because this upgrade usually costs you 12 money. It's quite expensive, whereas the, the barrel storage only costs you seven. So I get to come in here and flip this around now. And sadly, taking the place of the lovely dog, uh, we have a server here who is basically going to give me an extra die every round. You can get the server cards, which I do get as well. So I'll grab one of those to put into my deck. And this basically gives me an extra die when I draw her, but the one on the actual, in the tavern itself, will give me an extra die every time. So that server will get shuffled in. I think my opponent, where is he? He's uh, sitting off camera. Uh, little Glass Marty over here. He's got to go for something different, hasn't he? Do they go for barrel storage? Maybe just some cards? I think he is just going to go for the cards. He's going to get a server, a table, and a brewer. And then these are done with. So Marty's essentially had one less gold worth of starting things, but all of these cards are worth points. So he's essentially started off with, what, four more points than me? So that's the last bit of setup. Let's get into round one. I have already put the moon token on round one. We get a bonus at the start of the round, and you can see all of the bonuses that you're going to get. We each get a counter guest. So this is a special ability that we can use. We can expend this token out of the game, uh, and we don't have to decide until we use it. On this side, it can be used after we've drawn all of our cards. If we decide we don't like them, we can discard them all and start drawing again. And here we can move up on the monastery track. We'll see what all of that means and stuff later on. But for now, they are going to be sitting at our bars. And loads of this happens simultaneously. So you know, it's going to be a little bit slower in the video because I've only got one hand at the moment and you need to see it. Uh, but yeah, loads of this can happen simultaneously. So guests arrive now. We draw cards, putting them where they need to be in our taverns until all of your tables are full. Now, for me... I've only got three tables. I've got no table cards in there that are going to increase my ability. Uh, so a benefit of what Marty took at the start, he's potentially, the round that he draws that table, he's going to get to draw more cards. 
So when we draw the cards, they go into different places. So servers go over here. And my servers come out straight away, so I'm going to get two extra dice, two extra actions in the, this round. Then this is one of your starting seven guests. They fill up a table, and they're basically action spots. I can place dice here in the action round uh, to earn some money. But, of course, they're not great guests to begin the game with. As soon as all of your tables are full, that's it. So they are the cards that I am starting with. I'm going to get more dice to do stuff with, and hopefully they're going to be useful. For Marty's guests arriving, he's got himself a guest, a guest, and would you guess it, another guest. So, it means he's much more likely to draw his uh, table next time and have a bigger round. So that is it for guests arriving. As a bonus for my servers, for each one, I get to take a die of my colour, maximum three. So you can stock up on servers, but if they all come out in one go, it's a bit of a waste. But the advantage that you have is, because you only stop when these tables are full, all of your staff cards that you've gotten are basically free draws. So, uh, yeah, they might not be earning you more money and stuff, but they can be vitally useful. So I've got a six and a two there to use in the action phase. And then we select dice in turn order. So I'm the first player. I've got this uh, lovely beer here. I have my beer mat and Marty has his. And they've got four white dice on them. We Each player rolls their four dice puts them on their coaster, and in turn order, we're going to get a die from the coaster in front of us. After that, we're going to swap our dice. So we're drafting, essentially. So what would I like to do? And now we can come over to the glorious wonder of all of the dice placement spaces. So I can place dice on customers. See, specific dice want to be on here. Two, one, two, to earn that much money in this case. I can put dice over on my money chest, which can later be upgraded into a till. Uh, I can only put one there, because you've got one X on all of these things. I can put one die on there, can be any number, I will earn a money. I can put as many dice as I like on this monk here, and for each one I will move along the monastery track and get bonuses as I swing on by there. So as many as I like, but they have to be fives. I can pop dice down here, just any die, only one, though, to earn myself a beer. Beer is how we are going to recruit new guests. And I can put ones or sixes down here, as many as I like, to earn beer as well. So I can already be thinking, you know, I've got this two here that could go on my guests, and I haven't rolled any... Nobody's rolled any twos, so that's the only two that's going to be coming into the game here. Do I want to be advancing on the monastery track, getting bonuses, new cards and stuff? Do I want to be brewing some more beer? Because I've gotten a load of sixes and fives to be doing that with. I think I'm going to Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to head over for the monastery track, I think. I'm going to put a four, well, I don't have to say where I'm putting it, but uh, for my memory, I'm going to pop it on there. And so Marty at the same time will be thinking, you know, his guest if he wants to get some money, it's only one money uh, for having that one there. He could get that money from putting it on his till. If uh, that's all he wants, you can. You have a small bank at the start of the game. You can store up to two money between rounds. Uh, so, what would he like to do? He could be advancing up the monastery track as well. I think he's going to go for some beer. He's going to grab a one to put on his brewer to get some beer. Then we swap our coasters around and choose again in turn order. So three's not useful to me. There's the till in the barrel where they can go, but you know they can be the last ones drafted. I'm going to go for, Marty didn't take it, I'm going to have another five there, I'm going to go to the monastery again. Marty is potentially just going to stick with his beer brewing, I think. He's going to grab another six, then swap them around. Let's see, I probably want to get some kind of beer. I've got nothing right now. Four isn't particularly going to do me any good, although I could, I could put a four on, just brew a beer, and then try and get another money. Yeah, let's let's put a, a six on the brewer. And then Marty with a three. He wants to he wants to just try and brew as much beer as possible, which I think is gonna be that. I think three is gonna be the max, and then just swap between us a four and a three. Uh, there's nothing particularly of use for there. Would I like to brew a second beer or would I like to get some money? I think having some money could be useful. Yeah, I think I am going to go on money. 
and we're just going to probably store that beer for next round. Marty can't put this anywhere else. He's going to have to earn a money there. So after we've selected all our dice, that we then plan actions, which I've kind of skipped ahead on just so I remember what I was drafting the dice for. But you can change your mind up to this point. And then in turn order, we execute the actions because maybe something that someone does will change what you want to do. If they uh, get the guest that you particularly wanted, maybe you'll change your mind on what you wanted to do. So before we take an action, we first compare our beer and money production. So we look at where we've got our dice. First of all, I am going to produce three money and one beer. So there's a bit of a difference there. I gain reputation equal to the lower value. So you want to balance them out if you want a load of reputation. I just get one, which isn't going to get me anything right now. Uh, it's points. At the end of the game, if I'm still here, I'll get a point. But you'll get bonuses as you go along, and you'll just keep going around this, so you can earn loads of money by getting a lot of reputation. Marty, on the other hand, is kind of the opposite. He's going to be making three beer, but he's only got one money, so he will also get one reputation. Then we take our actions. So I think I'm just going to move along the monastery track first, which, uh, oh, spoilers, there was a retake. I already did that. Uh, it just goes to space one. Nothing happens because there's nothing there. Marty is going to attract himself a better guest. So in the display here, we have all of these guests that you can bring to your bar. Uh, they have different costs. Well, they've come out in order here, five, six, seven, eight uh, beer. But there is always this stack of three beer patrons. So he is going to take from the top of that. Uh, it costs him his beer, so it isn't an action to generate the beer. This shows you you have the beer, and any leftover at the end goes into your barrels if you've got space for it. So he's generated that three beer, and he is hiring this patron. He gets a signature token for it, and if you look at his guest book here, uh, you look at the column is how much you paid for the guest. He paid three beer, it goes to the top of that column. And you can see there are rewards for completing rows, you will get a noble. A noble is 10 points, and a customer that will get you two money for a two. And if you complete columns as well, you can get different bonuses as you cover up these spaces but also nobles at the bottom of those two. I will keep going up my monastery track, and for going here now, I gain myself a bar back. He goes on top of my draw deck, so he's going to be giving me a beer. And what was that? That was moving on the monastery again, wasn't it? Marty now is just going to have to bank this leftover one cash by sliding that marker up. And then for me, I have... Just one beer. Marty's finished with the actions now, so I can just do mine. I have one beer to take into the next round. Can't do anything with just one right now. But I do have three money. You can only recruit one guest per round, but you can recruit many of these helper cards. In each round, you can only recruit one of each type. So with three money, I could just get myself a dishwasher. This would let me adjust a die by one. Or I could get myself a bar back. That's an extra beer and a bard. That's more reputation. And all next round. I would love, of course, to get a table, but that's too expensive right now. I think, yeah, I'm going to grab myself a bard and a bar back. So at the end of the round, all the dice have been used up. The cards go to your discard pile, which there are handy little spaces for at the sides of your board. Excess stuff goes into your storage. I've done that. Uh, and then we're not on round eight, so the game doesn't end, and Marty becomes the new start player. We move to round two, and you'll notice we move over a schnapps. So we each get a schnapps, and these can be used to activate our entertainer tiles, which we will see right now. In fact, that's the bonus for round two. We each get a singer. So when you gain these entertainers, you decide which side they are going to be on for the rest of the game. And this is basically an extra action that you can do. Two schnapps for three beers, or flip over, uh, one schnapps for two money, you know, as many times as you like, as you can afford. I think I'm going to go for the money. I'm going to go for the staff. Marty. Yeah, let's let's have him keep going for the beer. Let's see uh, how all this shakes out. Uh, so yeah, they go on there. Guests arrive and Marty's first this time. So let's have a look at who comes in. He's got, oh, the new guest that he recruited. He's got another table. So actually, my, my discard pile realized does not go there <laughs> this is where all of your extra tables go this gold pile can be anywhere so he is going to have a good round no doubt because he's got other cards right he only started with upgraded cards uh, but no more have come out right now <laughs> that's just it they'll come out next round don't worry about that as for me 
what have I got? I've got my bar back who goes over here and will just generate me a single beer. Uh, I'll have my bard who I think goes on this side and will just get me a reputation. Then I have another bar back. I have get, I think it's just guests in my deck now, basic guests. Twos and ones. So I still get my extra die because of my permanent server. Got myself a three there. Another one's going to have to go back for now. And then we each roll our four dice and we can get drafting. So what does Marty have? He's got a load of twos and threes for guests. This is the only three that's been rolled. Marty's grabbing that three. He's going to activate that three money guest. For me, I've got fives and sixes. I could keep going on the monastery train, couldn't I? A couple more fives, and Marty's rolled loads of fives as well. A couple more fives equals a dishwasher. Help me adjust some dice. So I already do have three beer to recruit, you know, a basic uh, three-cost guest, but I could get a better one if I got loads of beer, couldn't I? There's loads of fives around, not many sixes. I'm going to grab that six, swap over. What's Marty going to take this time? Fives and sixes, he could get on the monastery train a little bit as well, but... Maybe he wants to just keep recruiting guests. He could get himself a bar back by going up the monastery track a bit as well. There's no more guests for him to put dice on right now. But he could get... There's three more dice. He could get three more beers. It would be nice for him to get some more money, wouldn't it? With four money, he could buy a server and potentially get some more dice. Now, he doesn't want to leave all the fives for me. As for me, do I want to just... Well, this is the only one, so I might as well take this. I could pop it on my... If I want money to buy more cards, I'm going to need some money, aren't I? Because, yeah, no twos came out. I've got that three for me, which actually is just going to have to go on one of the question mark spaces. So, swap around again. He could just put this five on beer or money or something. I'll we'll decide in a bit. Maybe it'll go on the monk. Because with, yeah, four money, he could just get a dishwasher with three. But more dice might be even better than just adjusting dice. Okay. For me, five and a six, I think more beer, and then it's a five left at the end either way. So that's it for the drafting. And am I going to leave this like this? At the moment, I am earning one money and four beers. So if I did want more reputation, maybe I'd want to earn an extra money, maybe rather than, rather than getting one of the beers. Let's see, I've got two, three... Five beers at the moment. I could recruit myself a nice five five die means five money guest. That is tempting. I could not move up the monastery track and just get a money instead. I think I'll do that actually. Yeah, I'm gonna leave those there, which so I get two money and four beer. So that's two reputation. I get a schnapps because I can always get more money this way. It doesn't affect your reputation earning money in this fashion but I now have two schnapps to earn some money with. Marty's currently generating four money and no beer. I think he'd, he'd certainly want to generate some beer. Yeah. He's going to just generate one beer because you can put anything on the barrel. So he gets a reputation. And I think that's just going to have to be it for him now. So there's nothing to be done with one beer. He hasn't got enough schnapps to do anything there. He is going to... Maybe he should have redrawn to get uh, his workers out rather than just have all these guests he can't do anything with. Too late to be thinking about that, though. He is just going to go up the monastery track, I think, and he is going to use his counter guest, so out of the game now, to move up a second space, so at least he will just get the bar back straight away. I've just realised my special three isn't on here yet. That'll be another beer, which wouldn't have affected the reputation. So I've got six beer. Oh, yes, I'm going to recruit. Although I know Marty can't do that. He can't. We're not getting in the way of each other in any way anyway. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So he is going to... Well, that's me, actually. I am going to spend all of these beers. And with six beers, I can recruit this guest, which will get me. Uh, so he goes on top of my deck, gets me a schnapps. Can you see on the card there? Schnapps. And he goes in the five column of my guest book. And then we need to... Let me grab another signature token. We need to refill that gap. And that's just going to be a five-cost guest. Marty has four money. So is he going to get dishwasher and bard? He could just get a dishwasher and save... He's got it saved money, actually. So he's got five money. He's going to grab a table to help him draw more cards. 
So that's all of that money spent. And let's, while we're just thinking about it, let's just put his beer in storage now. As for me, I have two money, but I do have schnapps, which can be worth more things later. There's more entertainers coming into the game straight away next round. Five schnapps for an upgrade. That could be huge. I could actually buy an upgrade, couldn't I? Let's have a look. And uh, two schnapps to get rid of a guest. Completely out of your game. You know what? I've potentially got eight money here. I want a table. That's going to be five. So I've got two from here. So I'm going to have to spend two here to get four, six money. There's one left over. I could spend another schnapps, but I think I'm just going to spend the leftover on another board. I'll get some staff as well. So that's all of my dice used too. So that is the end of round two. Okay, it's round three. We get that new entertainer. Am I going to get loads of schnapps for these upgrades? Or do I just want the simpler one that can thin out my deck? I think I'm going to go cheaper, I think. Marty might go big and try and get a free upgrade. But I don't know how we're getting this schnapps just yet. But it's, it's early days. So I'm the first player again. Let's fill up my tavern. Guests arrive. A bard's here, someone's brought a table. We have my uh, my expensive guest. I've run out of cards, so I need to shuffle my deck. What's coming out? It is <laughs> the low-cost guest, and unfortunately for me, another low-cost guest. I could just discard all of these and try a better draw. You know, I've got my barbacks in the deck there still. I could earn five money, though, just with that guy, couldn't I? Yeah, I'm going to keep it like that, so I get a reputation from the board, and that's it. Marty is getting his table that he bought, and a bar back, then cheap guest, server, and brewer. Oh, they work great. So basically every die here is worth an extra beer this round for Marty. Then, oh, somebody shuffled his deck ahead of time. Thinking ahead. Uh, he's got another table. Okay, so here is Marty's great big round. But really, he's just hoping that all of his um, helpers come out rather than all of the guests. Okay, it's just guests all the way down. And it is dice time, isn't it? So I get my special die, which is going to be a four. Marty gets a special die because he drew a server. And it's worth mentioning now, in case I forget in a second, when you're doing upgrades, so getting a permanent server costs you 12 money, right? And it gets you a noble paying for an upgrade. But he can give back as many server cards as he's got out here to get a four discount for each one that he gives back. And most upgrades have a discount as well. Let's see what dice we're rolling here. Let's see what we're dealing with. Okay, lower numbers. I've got my eye on that five. Marty can see what I've drawn as well. I've got a five anyway, it's okay. So, and Marty though wants ones and sixes the most, doesn't he, to put on there. So I could take a five away, but then if Marty takes that five away, <laughs> out of spite, I can't handle that. So Marty is definitely going to go in for the beer, I think. Swap back around. I, let's see, I only need ones for guests and I've just given my one away. So, do I want... I could just keep on the monastery track, couldn't I? I've still got my counter guest. And we do want to balance out. I've got five money now, so I probably want to try and get as much beer as possible. I've got this four that's doing nothing. You're, just, you're limited by the question mark dice you can have on things. So I'm, I'm going to take the five. At least it could do monastery rather than be on a question mark. Marty. Now, he can generate all of this beer, but is he going to be able to get money? There is a two on my... There's a two coming back to him. So yeah, he's safe taking that one and putting it on there. Then... Oh dear, what was that? I think that was a three. I can't remember. Hold them straight. Uh, so for me... It was dice that were no good to me, I think. I think I, no, one was a one, wasn't it? Oh no, he took the one. I don't know what it was. We're just going to have to deal with that happening. Uh, so... Yeah, I can't earn any more money, but I don't need money, do I? But I can only get one. I'm going to have a wasted die, I think. I haven't got a dishwasher or anything to adjust the numbers. What's good for Marty? He just needs twos. Yeah, nothing is particularly good for Marty. Uh, so he's got a two here in front of him. 
and then swapping around I can take a three it's not going to go anywhere though I wish I had a, a dishwasher now to put that up to a five so I could have another monastery action Marty can put the four on money yeah because he wants money because he's already earning loads of beer if we just look at where these dice can go I've just got a wasted die I can't do anything about that frustrating when it happens but it happens so I've got myself six money and only one beer frustratingly that's just one. I do get myself a signature token from being here, though. And this can go in any column I like. So I could pop it in here and get a bonus. But I think I'm going to pop it in the six there so I can get a schnapps if I do end up getting another six cost. Oh, I did get a six cost, didn't I? That, that signature should be there. So I could. I'll get a schnapps, yeah. Marty's got himself three money and four, five beer. So... That's going to be three reputation. Two, three. Gets himself a schnapps. Okay, then actions. I've got a lot of money. I could get myself a brewer. I've got six money, haven't I? I haven't got any stored beer or anything. Let's do monastery, and I'm going to spend my counter guest to go up a second time in the monastery. So I've got a dishwasher now. That will hopefully help me next round. With six money, could I afford an upgrade? No, I could upgrade the bank. And it is points. You get a noble for doing that. I could spend the two schnapps on more money. <laughs> or I could spend it on removing someone from my deck. You know, getting rid of one of these basic customers. Which is actually probably a better thing to do. I would have ten money if I spent all of that to buy staff with. <sighs> that is really tempting. It's another table, isn't it? Which kind of negates one of the bad guests being there. On to Marty, though. He's got himself, what, two, four... Five, six beer in total. There isn't a six guest out. So he can't get one with a bonus, sadly. But he is going to go for a five. So it basically means his one stays in storage. Uh, this signature goes onto the five spot. And his guest goes on top of the deck. I am going to give myself ten money by handing these in for two each. With that ten, I'm going to get myself a table. And uh, that dishwasher would come out next round, though. Might be worth it. You get another server, it's more points, it's more dice to roll. I think five, six, seven, eight, and then a bar back is just a beer, isn't it, guaranteed? I think I'm going to go for another bard, another reputation, and then save the extra money there. Marty's just got three. Yeah, he's got nothing in storage. So what would he like? Would he like a dishwasher? I think he's going to go bar back bard. He's still, oh, he could actually. Instead of a five, he could have given up those two schnapps. To get three more beers, you know what? He'll do that. Do a, a cheeky take back. I forgot that he took that power. So I haven't, repl I haven't replenished the, the line yet, luckily. So he could get two monastery movement for recruiting this seven, which would get him a dishwasher and six money for a six die. Or he could get this eight cost, which would let him remove one of his earlier guests from the game. Ooh, he is going to go on guest removal duty. So the signature goes there instead. He spent his two schnapps and a new guest should come out. Costs four. I believe I've got one beer left over, but I believe that's it for the round. So I think I'm going to leave it here for part one. I am going to play all the way through the rest of the game if you'd like to see that. Part two will be linked very shortly or it's in the description right now. Uh, if you'd like to see more games that I've done, there's like 450 playthroughs on this channel. I'm sure you'll find something that you will enjoy. And if you'd like to help me keep making the videos, Patreon, as I mentioned, it's in the description. Thank you so much if you support me on there. I'll see you wherever you end up. Bye, everyone.